I'm Holly. Uh, I made some pretty popular covers of songs on this $30 website, uh, also previously known as gdcolon.com slash uh, where you can play sounds, change pitches, make songs out of it, make memes, whatever you want to do. And in response to those covers of songs getting really popular, I have gotten some messages from people and some comments from people asking a bunch of questions about how I make this kind of stuff. Some of it is a bit more rhetorical, like, how do you make this? This is crazy. But uh, some of it is very specific and it can range from very basic things, such as how do I change the pitch of sounds to more complex things like how do I make full on songs? And I'm going to try to make this into a two part guide explaining what to do on this website and what are some basic commands, what are some, what does everything do on this site? And then later on, I want to talk about things like song creation. What do you want to do when approaching this for a larger project? This first part of the video is going to just cover the basics of how do you use the website? What's everything you can do on here? Yeah, hopefully this can help people who are just kind of finding their way around the site and uh, can get them started on working on bigger things. So something to note before I start up into this guide is that I'm going to be doing most of my work here on the beta version of the site. Released on July 1st, this version of the site is a work in progress. It features new actions, new sounds, new options. Uh, and a new playback system. So hopefully over time this video will still be more accurate, if anything. But uh, as of the release of this video, it's probably inaccurate. Uh, compared to the original site, there, as you can see, there are missing actions. And I will explain everything that is currently in beta, which might not hold up in the future or just doesn't exist right now. But I will be covering everything mostly on this beta site. And I also have this version of the site with the $30 rewrite activated. The $30 rewrite is basically a script that you can add to the site through something like Tamper Monkey that will basically change how songs are played back and loaded in the site. And it makes it a lot easier. I'll be outlining what to do with this later on. But generally, I'm just going to be sticking to the beta. If there's something that's beta content, I will outline it. But hopefully in the future, it'll get added into the actual site. So. Let's just start out with the basics. Um, this is our soundboard. It contains all the sounds that we can mess around with. And you can see the very basic commands are up here in the top right. It says left click to add sound, right click to preview. So if we want to preview the sounds that we have the options to, each sound corresponds to a single picture. So this is Vine Boom, as you can see from the names up in the top left. This is Vine Boom. This is Bong from Taco Bell. This is Honk from Untitled Goose Game. And you have a bunch of other options that you can work with. If you want to add the sound to your sequence, which we'll get into a little bit later, you just left click it. It's added down here. Now, if we look down at the sequence, this is what's going to play every time you use the site, or every time you play back sounds. So if we press the play button here, don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. It will play all the sounds in order at the speed you desired. It's defaulted at 300 beats per minute right now, but we'll cover that later. But every time you play it by pressing the play button, it will play the intro. Don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. If you want to skip the intro, you can right click it. You can press the enter key or you can press the space key which makes things super easy for uh, testing your playback. And if you want to change what plays at the start right now, on the normal site, there are two options. Um, but on the beta, there are three. So you have, don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. Don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. You have, how are you going to talk behind my back when you dead ass built like a... Bro, how are you going to talk behind my back when you dead ass built like a... And then new to this site, White people be like. White people be like. Since we were talking about the sequence, let's just head down here to the sequence. As you can see, again, in the top right are the basic commands. If you want to preview a sound again, you can right click it. If you want to change the pitch of a sound while hovering over it with your mouse, just scroll. Uh, 
Um, each pitch operates in semitones. If you're not familiar with the music theory behind that, that's okay. But basically it is what is equivalent to a step on whatever instrument you're using. And that's generally the basis for Western music. Something to note that's important with changing pitch is the speed increases if you increase the pitch and decreases if you decrease the pitch. Amogus. So listen to how long it takes to say this amogus. amogus. And then if I move it up, it'll get very fast. And then if you want it to be really slow, pitch it down. Nightmarish. But if you want to change any specific timing of a sample to match up with the rhythm of a song, that's how you do it. Um, if you want to remove a sound, you just left click on it. If you want to clone a sound to make another version of it in the sequence, you just hold the shift key down and then you click it. And then if you want to change the position of a sound, you can move it around. So now if we just press space, this is what this sounds like. And that's it for basic commands. I'm going to go into some slightly more advanced commands. If you want to clone a sound to the end of the sequence, you just hold shift and then you right click. It'll move it immediately to the end. I believe this is just a beta feature. So if we go back to the normal site and we do shift right click, nothing happens. So hopefully that gets added soon because that would be a very nice feature to have when making songs on this site. If you want to change the pitch in larger increments than one, hold the shift key down and it'll change it by a factor of six. And then if you hold the alt key down, it'll change it by a factor of 0 0.2. When making music, you generally don't need to change things by 0.2, but it might be nice to maybe pitch correct things, or if you're down to making microtonal music, go for it. The reason goes by six, because if you scroll down twice, you get an octave, which is the same key, essentially, just higher or lower, the same note. If you only go six, that's a tritone. It's a very dissonant sound. If you don't know enough about music, that's fine. That's why if you're holding shift down, it might sound a little weird shifting between things. Like it might not sound right initially, but it is. I think that's it for the sequence right now. What I'm actually going to do next is go to the bottom of the page and I'm gonna talk about the settings and the shortcuts options that are new to the beta. Um, on the original site, the settings were just kind of at the bottom, but now they're in little menus. And then the shortcuts tab is right here, which outlines every single shortcut that you'll ever need to use on this site. Which is super nice because then we don't have to look at Twitter for advice on things to do. As you'll see, most of this stuff I've generally covered. You can use up and down to do the same thing as scrolling, but your mouse has to be hovered over it anyway. So it's probably just nice for people with keybinds. And then for general use, if you want to close a pop-up, you press, you can click out of it or you can press the escape key. If you want to save your project, control S and then shift and forward slash open settings and control forward slash open shortcuts. So if you ever need to see what a shortcut is, just do control forward slash, which is an easy command to do on your, on the right side of your keyboard. And if we go to settings, you have six settings that you can turn on. These are the settings that I would recommend having available, but I'll go into detail of each one. Action shortcuts, if you have this enabled, you can use the actions, which I haven't covered yet. As you can see, right next to combined sounds, there's a C in parentheses. That means you can press the C key and a combined sounds button will appear in the timeline. And every one of these has a key and you can disable that. I don't use this feature a lot, but there's no reason really to have it disabled. Of course, if you hold shift and click it down, just like the sounds, uh, it'll move to the start of the sequence. Auto scroll, it just means that if you're playing a longer song, the song will scroll automatically down as it plays. Uh, so let's load in an older song of mine. And you can see the auto scroll in the As you saw at the start, it's a little bit iffy with uh, when you don't press the intro, which I hope gets fixed in some future version, but it's generally not much of a problem. And I can imagine you could find that 
annoying in some instances, but I generally don't think it's very intrusive. So I like keeping it on. It might interfere with the $30 rewrite, which I'll talk about later, but I don't think it generally does, so I don't really touch it. Exit confirmation. If you have an active project that isn't saved, it'll let you know with a pop-up saying changes you have made might not be saved. So if you ever do something like try to right-click this, but then you accidentally click back, it'll let you know. Always have this active as a backup because you always want to make sure your work is safe. That's my suggestion for you. Disable animations. So without this check, you'll see that these bells move up and down each time they play. Uh, you can disable these animations, but have things still play. And if your computer isn't quite able to run this site properly, that might be something that you want to do. But uh, generally, even with my crazy beasts of songs, I think it's fine. That might be my computer, but I don't think web problems are super demanding on computers in general. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm being dumb, but I don't see too much of a reason to disable animations unless things are going crazy. Pin section controls. This is new to the beta. I will talk about sections later and I'll describe what this does later. In the old save system, originally on this site there was a different save system. The new save system is much better. It does the same stuff as the old save system, but a lot more elegantly in my opinion because you can just name things down here. You can save, you can save as very easily. If you're watching this video and you need advice on how to use this site, I don't recommend using the old save system because there's no reason for you to go back to it. Before I get into actions, I want to talk about the save system because we were just on that. Basically, if you want to save a project, you can type in the name of your project down here. And then if you don't have a copy of it saved already, you can press save or save as. It'll do the same thing. Pop up will show up of whatever your default folder is and then you can save it wherever you want. I'm just gonna save it in my downloads. So when you want to load it somewhere else, it'll take the last saved version of that song or of that file. And it works between any version of the site. So like I just moved from the beta to the normal version of the site, nothing should really be changed between the two. These file formats should always be reliable. So now, as you can see, I have added Taco Bells. If I save it, it automatically gets saved to the file because it knows where the file is. If I try to load it, it'll have the Taco Bells. If you want to load a song, as I demonstrated a little bit earlier, you just have to find the file that you want to load, and then you just click it, open it, and then it's here on the side. And then as you will see, the file name will stay there. If you want to be safe after clearing, just get rid of that. I do that. I have backups of all my files too in case I mess up saving, but it should hopefully not be too much of a problem. Now let's talk about the actions and we're going to go through all of them. Uh, like other commands, if you hold shift while clicking them, it'll move them to the start of the sequence. As opposed to clicking it normally. If you right click these, it'll just give it a default value, which should very rarely be useful. Most of these have uh, pop-up menus that you will want to access. So I don't recommend right-clicking them in really any circumstance. First, we have the tempo option. The tempo is the speed that your sounds are played. It is measured in beats per minute, which is just standard among music. And basically it just means how many notes are going to be played per minute. So if we set this to 60 beats per minute, and we have a goose playing. We're going to get a goose every second because there are 60 seconds in a minute. If you want to add to the tempo, you can do that and add a certain amount or subtract a certain amount if you want it to be negative. For all of these that have values underneath them, you can use Shift and Alt as well and just scroll normally to change their values on the fly. And if you look right above the play button, you can actually see the beats per minute. So it's going to start at 60 and then it's going to become 70 after the second hop. Uh, you can also multiply the tempo by a certain amount. Uh, so if you want to make it twice as fast, you can just set it to two, which means after the second honk, the honks will ha happen twice as fast. 
And you can also, of course, make it slower as well through decimals. This is super nice if you want to put anything in double time for songs, or if you just have faster notes that you need to play temporarily, you should use the multiply. The add tool I don't really ever use, but uh, make sure you set your uh, tempo at the start of your song because it will default to 300 beats per minute, which you can see above the play button. Next, you have the volume button where you can change the vault, you can set the volume to anything you want. So you can just set it to 50%. And you can hear that the goose has gotten quieter. You can also add to the volume. So if you wanted to increase it by 10% for each honk, you can just do this, which is generally just a better coded way than just changing it by 50 manually or changing it by 10 manually from 50. So instead of going like 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, you could just go 50 plus 10. And we're going to cover loops in a bit. This is going to be useful in loops. Of course, you can make them negative as well to make it so it gets quieter. And then you can also multiply for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to multiply sound by a certain amount, but now it's going to be three times as loud. And as you can see, since it's set to 50% and not multiplied by half, it the change in volume was a lot quieter, or a lot more than what we experienced earlier. Next is the pause button. Something that we didn't talk about in the sounds option is that there's a silence button, which instead of playing a sound during a Q, it plays nothing and leaves the sound to silence. And that is super useful. I use silence a lot for organization rather than speeding up and slowing things down. The silence is just a very good tool to learn how to use in the context of making songs. Like it's a very nice tool to just fill something out with silence and then fill in, replace the silence with things that you need to replace it with. Now we have a rhythm where you can see that there are two pieces of silence between each clap, boom. And it's just a very good tool to get used to. And there's a pause for duration option, which is basically the same as silence, but you can set it to any amount you want. So instead of having two pieces of silence between each clap, boom, we can put a pause for two. Um, a pause for one is the same thing as silence, so there's not really much of a reason to run it with that. I generally do not recommend using pause for duration too much, just because using silence for organization is so valuable. Um, but it does work, and it is a tool that you can use. And of course, you can scroll it, you can shift scroll it, you can alt scroll it, which I actually haven't, haven't tried before. It feels like it could very easily break something. I might, I might mess with that later, but don't, don't scroll in increments for this one. This doesn't seem like it's made for it. So next we have the transpose option, which lets you change the pitch of all subsequent sounds or all sounds after it by a certain number of semitones, which is like scrolling up for one. So if we move this here, it'd be the same thing as if I did that. And this is especially useful for loops or for parts of songs you want to repeat, but shifted slightly higher. Let's do a little demonstration. As you can hear, it got one semitone higher. You can boost a lot. Of course, you can add or you can set to. Something you can do at the start of a song is if you don't want your song's basis to be a certain note, if you want it to be something else, where uh, you want a scroll of zero to be your bass note, you can actually change the transpose a certain amount. So let's say right now this block is in F sharp. But let's say you wanted to make it an E, which is two semitones down from the F sharp. Instead of doing this for everything, you can just get a transpose, 
set it to negative two semitones and it'll start as an E instead. I haven't seen anybody do it yet because this is a beta feature that just came out, but I think it could be a useful way of using this tool. Next we have the loops. So a loop should be pretty obvious on what it does. It'll loop a certain part. You can set how many times it loops as well. And something important to remember is that the amount of times it loops is going to be one less than the amount of times it plays. So let's say we tell it to loop once, it means that this pattern is going to play twice. And if we said three times, it's going to play four times. It's just an inherent nature of loops. Maybe some of you are familiar with that, but it's important to keep in mind when repeating something a lot. If you just want to loop once, you can just use this loop once button. It's the exact same thing as clicking this and setting it to one. And then let's say you only want to loop a certain part of a song. That's where the set loop start point comes in. So what should happen is we will hear these Mario's and then we'll hear this and then it'll go, the loop will go back to the start point, play this again, and then we'll hear the four Mario's again. <laughs> you can imagine the usefulness of that. And now with this loop knowledge required, I'm just gonna make a little something. Then we can loop that. And now I want to bring up the combine sounds option, which is the next thing here, which is the most important thing for songs, because if you have two sounds, what the dog doing? That you want to play together, you just have to put the combined sounds between them. And down here, when the uh, sequence plays them back, they'll play together. And there is no technical limit to how many of these you can put together. Like if you want to add as many here. sounds mm. as you want, mm. and they can all be controlled independently. Um, but it is important to keep in mind that this site has problems uh, processing. Processing a lot of sounds happening at once. Each sound got delayed a little bit on the base website, and this is currently something that's being fixed in the beta, and that's also something that the $30 rewrite fixed, which is why I recommend installing $30 rewrite if you try to make any kind of songs with this website. Don't treat this like a restriction, but do be aware that merging too many sounds over and over again can become problematic for the site. Like. I load one of my later sound or later songs onto the site. You'll hear it slowly slow down. Like if we load it here on the site with the rewrite, this is what it should sound like. You can hear everything's playing together just fine. Then if we play it here on the base site, Hear that things are a little bit slower and this is just because there's so many combined sound buttons at a time so do just be aware of that hopefully the beta fixes this with its new sound engine it's not perfect right now and it experiences weird random bugs which is why i'm not going to be demonstrating it too much with my newer songs but if I get rid of these target things, which is one of the current bugs, this should sound better. And generally it does. So hopefully, but yeah, there are bugs. So hopefully in the future, the combine sounds option is not going to be any kind of restriction. Go to target and target. This just lets you go places in the sound if you want to skip certain parts what or return to certain parts doing? you can use this so this go to target will immediately jump to the this target which means that this whole dog section should be skipped 
And you can change the value of these targets as well, which means you can have multiple targets. So if we put one at the start, bring its target over here, it can also go backwards. So one will go to one, two will go to two. What the, what the, what the, what the, and a unique quirk of targets that is easy to use or easy to abuse is that targets refresh themselves in loops, but they do not refresh themselves from other targets. So as you'll see, this one target will get used up in the first time this plays. And then this two target will bring us back to the start. And then since this one target will be used up, we will hear the dogs the second time, but not the first time which is great for making some songs. I abuse that in some of my songs like Strat, where um, certain build-up parts of the song only play on the second loop around. But like I said, if you loop it instead of targeting it, these targets will get refreshed. And we heard no dogs. So keep that in mind when using targets. That could be a unique tool for some of you, but maybe that's just beyond what some of you guys are thinking of. Next is the stop all sounds button. So if we listen to the bleep and scroll down a lot, it's a sound that plays for a decent amount of time. And let's say we don't want to hear all of that. What we can do is we can do stop all sounds and on the next beat, or on the beat when the stop all sounds button plays, it will stop any sounds that happen before it. Now, do keep in mind that the stop all sounds button isn't treated like a sound. It will not count as a beat. So this will be the first beat, this will be the second beat. And the stop all sounds button will activate at the start of the second beat. The song will sound like this in function, but if we want to add a stop all sounds to make it stop playing before these guys happen, we just put it there. Maybe I made this a little more confusing, but I it is important to keep in mind. So now if we press play, you can hear that the bleep canceled itself before the vine booms played. Versus if we remove it, it plays continuously. And of course, what the dog doing? The distance from the original sound will affect how much of it plays. So we'll just do this a little bit with what the dog doing. What the, what the dog? What the dog? What the dog doing? What the dog doing? So keep that in mind when designing your sounds. Uh, sometimes you don't want things to play over each other. I find this to be a very useful tool for things like cars because those last a long time, which is a good thing and a bad thing. When making songs, you do want sustained sounds, but you don't want them to be sustained for too long. So learning how to fit these in is definitely an art form. Next, we're gonna talk about start position. This is a tool for when you're playing back songs. If you put the start position somewhere, that is where you're going to start your next playback if you press space. So as you see, it started from here and only played the bras. It did not play any of the vine booms. This is not something you're going to want to be using in the final versions of any songs because you want to play your whole song, right? But this is very nice for testing the playback of some of your songs. It's definitely a very nice tool. This might get outclassed by the dividers, which I'll talk about next. But as of right now, it is a very nice tool to have. If you have especially especially if you have very long songs and you only want to hear the final section of it rather than listening through the whole thing next i'm going to talk about dividers which is a new feature of this beta basically what it does is it divides your song into different parts of course you can shift click to copy it so now we have a vine boom part a clap part and a ding part as you can see in this bottom left corner this uh panel showed up this is what i had checked in settings earlier for pin section controls what this will let you do is it lets you select a section and it lets you do things like hide it from vision. Uh, you can just go back to it and make it come back. As you can see, with the sections and even with hiding stuff, uh, you can just press play. And everything will play the exact same as if there were no sections. It's just an organizational tool, which is really nice to have. The general tool for 
sections is holding control down. So if you want to deselect something, control D. If you want to uh, make a section visible or invisible, control right click or yeah. If you want to select a section, control click. When you have a section selected, this is why it's so useful. If you just press play, it'll start from there. and It'll go on to the end. So if you have entire sections of songs you want to work on, this will be a very nice organizational tool. Like I said, it's still in beta. Another thing with sections is that uh, when you have one selected, if you want to add sounds to it, it'll just add them to that section rather than the very end, which is super nice for editing. Next, let's talk about the flash screen option, which will happen as the sound after it plays. So this flash will happen with the uh, explosion sound. And as you can see, it just causes a flash of white on the site. I generally don't use this because in more complex songs, it can kind of lag behind. It can cause some visual issues on the site, but feel free to mess around with it. Just because I don't use it doesn't mean other people can't find good uses for it. Uh, next, we have the pulse screen button which is unique to the beta right now. Um, and it pulses the screen a certain amount of times at a certain frequency. So right now, let's say we want it to have four pulses and we want it to pulse every four beats, which is every four sounds. So if we place it at the start, it should go for every four beats, which is from here, this is the first beat. So one, two, three, four, one. So it'll go on all the red drums it'll go four times. So it'll go for all four red drums and then should not go on the ride symbol. And uh, by scrolling, you change how long it goes for. Uh, I don't know how to change its frequency besides just going into the pull screen menu and changing it. So if you want it to happen twice as fast, we divide it by two. But then if we want it to happen for the same amount of time, we have to double that. So now it should go on every drum. And yeah, that's what you can do with that. Right now, I think the animation is just a bit too slow and doesn't really fit in time with the music. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it, but I hope these elements get fixed as Colin develops the site a bit more and hopefully it becomes a nice little addition to the site. And then the last thing, which is unique to this beta, is set background color. What you can do is you can change the background color of the site to whatever color you want. You have this full colors option color menu here then all you have to do is select your color and then you can choose how long it takes to fade in from the current color to that color so as you'll see it fades to purple and as you can see it changed the default site color immediately after the song ended which is why i would recommend adding some kind of pause at the very end if you're recording it So then you can just kind of get the whole thing there until the video ends. Hopefully it'll become some kind of art form in of itself. That's it for base website stuff. I'm going to cover the options on the $30 rewrite now. It's a very simple thing. It just makes songs load in faster. It changes the playback system for the site. So it's more like an actual music maker. The guy who made the $30 rewrite is helping work on this beta to make the new version of the playback system more accurate. But as of right now, the rewrite is what we want to use. Right now you can see there's smoothly auto scroll screen and there's rows to play before scrolling the screen. This is an auto scroll feature. Uh, if you want to turn it off, you just set this to negative one. But as you can see, this will be um, how many rows it takes before it starts scrolling. So as you can see, this scrolls for every single row. But then if we want it to be every five rows, see the screen stays still for a bit, and then it drops down a bit more after five rows, and that's what it does. And then smoothly auto scroll screen is just kind of that fade. So the screen will be very jumpy right now. But then if you activate smoothly auto scroll, it goes a little bit, which is nice. So there are four playback options, which you can see the details of if you just hover over them. Uh, you'll see that little white pop up. They might not be that legible or readable on my end because of how I'm recording this. But uh, if you mess around with the site on your end, you can see the full descriptions there. 
There are four options for playing back the sounds. Uh, there is no delay where everything in a combine, which is just all the notes that are connected by uh, combined sounds. So like this is a combine, the maraca, the ride cymbal, and the note block. No delay makes it so all the sounds play at the same time. Uh, in the bass site, there is a delay between each sound of the combine and no fixing that afterwards, which means the sounds can get delayed and sound laggy in the bass site. That is also an option. There's delay notes in the same combine, which gives it the sound of the original website, but doesn't give it the lag. So like the maracas will play slightly before the cymbal, which will play slightly before the note block. And then there's delay notes in the same chord, which is basically the same thing, but it only applies for things of the same instrument. So since they apply to only things of the same instrument, this would be a chord it is the 18 and six note blocks. These are part of a combine, the maracas and the ride cymbal, but these are only the chord. So delay notes within the same chord is the only thing that that would apply to. Uh, that's pretty much it for playback. Uh, to install the $30 rewrite, what you need to do is just go to Tempo Optimizers, Twitter, you can click the link that uh, is pinned, and it'll take you to this site. Uh, and all you have to do is press the install button. You might have to do more stuff like install Tamper Monkey, which is what I use to read scripts on Edge and Chrome. It should work on all browsers, I think. Might not be sure. Uh, same with the base website. I, I use Chrome because I've found it to be the least laggy early on, and then it just kind of became a habit, even though I use Edge generally. But I think the site works on every browser pretty well. Apparently, um, Firefox is the best, which means I might try it in the future. But right now, I'm sticking with Chrome. The link to Tempo Optimizer's Twitter will be in the description. Of course, $30 website will also be in the description. And I think that's it for a general tutorial on how to use this site. Like I said, most important thing is shortcuts are going to be in this menu at the bottom. And pretty much everything has a description. Like every sound has a description in the top left. There's a description on the how to do things on the top right side. Every action has a little description here. Uh, on the rewrite, all of these have descriptions if you hover over them. If you go to settings, hover over something and you get a description. Uh, not all of these descriptions are available on the base site, but some of them are getting added over time. But generally, if you don't completely understand something, feel free to ask questions to me or to Colin or to Tempo Optimizer, the guy who made $30 rewrite, but like also look around on the site. There should be plenty of information to work with and hopefully there's not a lot of confusing things. There are little intricacies that you might not get immediately, like how exactly the targets work or how loops work. But over time, hopefully these things will become more understandable and more clear to you as you mess around in the site. I recommend just making simple loops, simple covers of things at the start. Like my first song is significantly more simple than my later songs. So don't go, don't go diving into the deep end. But yeah, that's it for basic usage of the site. I think in my next video, I'm just going to outline the process of making a song and hopefully I'll actually make the song and publish it in the process as well. So yeah, good luck on the site. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hopefully I'll see you around and I'll see you making things on the site if this if you're having trouble earlier.